This is Don't Panic, episode number 298, recorded January 4th, 2021. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of Don't Panic, the technology podcast on gadgets, the internet, and you. I am Sean Jennings, joined as always by the two original Bean Dads, it's Dan Miller and Colby Rabideau. Hello, gentlemen. Hi, Sean. Oh, feels bad. <laughs> yeah, we. Don't have... Are you up on this? The what? I, I'm. I'm going to be honest. I didn't hear what Sean said, so I was just hoping you would. You would feel. This. <laughs> I was wondering if you if this would have pierced your bubble, Colby. So, so what? what? But let, let let's have Sean explain it, and then I'll blow your mind. Okay. Are Are you familiar with Bean Dad? No. Oh, Bean Dad was yesterday's Twitter thing. Um, that is already over today. So I'm not surprised you missed it. But basically, there was a man on on Twitter who tweeted about, uh, it was like a 20 plus tweet thread about how his daughter wanted a snack. And, and she, I don't know if he gave her a can of beans or she grabbed a can of beans or something. But basically he was like, oh, here's a can opener, figure out how to use it. And his daughter is nine. And he's like, figure out how to use the can opener. And apparently she fought with it for hours and started crying. And I didn't read the whole thread. I kind of read the aftermath. But basically, he tweeted all about it in a thread. And eventually, I think I think she figured it out. But it took her like eight hours or something crazy like that. Um, and and he became hashtag bean dad. That's where the <laughs> came from. Uh, because after posting these, it got picked up by, I would say, a handful of people who said, hey, you know, it's good that you teach your kids how to let them do things for themselves. And the vast majority of people who said, you're a terrible dad, that's mean, you shouldn't do that. Um, Bean Dad got immediately canceled. Twitter account got deleted. Um, they started resurfacing a bunch of old tweets. Um, this person had a, a tenuous connection to some B-level celebrities that ended up getting exploited. Bean Dad, hashtag Bean Dad was just the thing. Did I miss anything, Dan? Is that pretty accurate? <laughs> wow. Uh, it was it was six hours. Six and hours. now, Colby, which uh, which host of which podcast that you listen to is Bean Dad? Oh. Um... It sounds like a John Roderick thing to do. <laughs> if we're being honest. <laughs> yep. Is that correct? Yep. He is Bean Dad. He got <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> and it's so funny because I saw the, the I saw the, all the stories from Bean Dad and all this going around. I'm like, who is this guy? And then like, oh my god, they kicked him off Twitter. I think he oh. deleted his Twitter. Oh, okay. Starting to take hold, like, and you know him, he's not very politically correct, if I may use that term. They were pulling like old tweets from 2012 and 2015. <laughs> and, and most of them were out of context, but they were like, what? This guy really is a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely wild. And then what happened? That's hysterical. Is, then, because he does the podcast with Ken Jennings, Ken Jennings, who is about to start a, a temporary run as Jeopardy host, as well as a new game show he's on a different one. Yeah. He stood up for John Roderick and then got everyone mad at him. <laughs> and then immediately like stopped talking about it. Cause I'm sure his PR people were like, you have a show coming out next week. Like shut your chest. Uh, right. It was, it was great. It was hashtag bean dab. And Oh, and Mabim Ma yeah. announced they're not going to use that theme, their theme song from the John Roderick's band anymore. <laughs> going to pick a new theme song. It's, it was a whole thing. And it was over in 24 hours. I did. Um, I did notice. I listened to Mabim Bam today. Their their year naming episode, and I they had like a weird, not normal theme song, which I assumed was, um, I, I assumed it was just them being weird, not like that <laughs> that John Roderick got canceled for for uh, making his daughter open a can of beans. <laughs> No. Yep. Well, that's weird. Yeah, 2021 off to a great start. <laughs> the theme of the year. Slack was down. We get that stupid thing. It's just a disaster. Train wreck. Now I'm nervous about my dishwasher coming tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> 
bad things happen in threes, man. Slack, being bad, and now you're ditched. <laughs> right. It would be really bad. I've how's that. how's it been just washing dishes? You you were pretty like net about it a couple of months ago, if I remember. I mean, like, it's whatever. Not... Who needs a dishwasher? <laughs> I think it was at first. It was annoying. Like at first, I was still in like had a dishwasher mentality where like. <laughs> You didn't have to do you like you didn't have to do anything until you ran the dishwasher and then you di just did all the dishes at the same time. But if you are the dishwasher, like doing that, like waiting until it's 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 uh you know not possible to continue using the kitchen if you unless, unless you wash the dishes is is quite taxing. Um, so like pretty quickly I adapted to do do dishes like in small increments like, you know uh continuously but then like i don't know i mean it still gets really tiring like every randomly m multiple times a day you have to stop for 15 minutes and do the dishes and that's like when i'm not uh that's like not even if there's like a cooking project going on that's just normally like there's a bunch of dishes if you make a sandwich um Wait, um, how many dishes so, are there if you make a sandwich? Oh, have you seen a Colby sandwich? Yeah, <laughs> like you need a cutting board. You got like, I, I, I honestly, I used to use like I would use one knife for the mayo and a separate, separate knife for like the mustard Hashtag because I didn't want to contaminate. Problems. Right. Well, <laughs> well, so th those things have changed too. Now I just rinse off the mayo knife <laughs> before I put it in the you, mustard. You animal. But. <laughs> I don't know. I like. Wait, what to, are you I like to fun. What do you mean? What am I cutting? Do you, well, he's got to like... slaughter the pig first. I was gonna say, do you have one of those? Like, are you, you uh, slicing off a little the bits of ham one at a time? <laughs> at the very least, I like to cut my sandwich in half after it's made. Ah. He's got to cut all the cut all the crust off. Right. I also don't like to have a dirty plate. So I do I, I like to have tomatoes on my sandwiches and tomatoes mm. on a sandwich demand to be seasoned, but I don't want like salt detritus on my plate. I like I don't want the outside of my sandwich to become salty because there is like now, excess salt on the plate. I see. And that's the same reason why you wouldn't use the cutting board for, for that purpose. Exactly. The cutting board is like the workspace, and then you like transfer the sandwich. Uh, I would absolutely unequivocally pay for an OnlyFans that's just a live stream of Kobe <laughs> making a sandwich every day. <laughs> like that would that would be the treat of the day. Maybe I I I make a sandwich most days, so just the intricacy. Now, can I ask you guys a couple of washing dishes related questions? Because I know yeah. some people yeah. do it some one way, and some do it. first. Do you guys? And I never understood people who do this, but do you wash your dishes as you cook or do you wait till the end and wash all your dishes? Depends. Yeah, it depends. Um, in my new reality, I often wash my dishes as I'm cooking because, again, I don't want to have a, a you know, dishmageddon at the end of the night. <laughs> That's smart. Yeah. For me, it's a question of like, um, sometimes people i'm in a position where there's two people making dishes sometimes and sometimes like one person's task is taking longer so i'm not gonna just like start watching tv at that point i'll be like well okay i might as well wash the dishes now um since we're still in this mode or if it's something that's like oh and now uh you know let this thing sit for an hour and then add this other thing it's like okay now i'll wash the dishes otherwise i always save it for the end yeah, I'm going to save it for the end guy, too. My other question was, what is your, again, I've had disagreements with people, what's your washing implement, your tool? Are you a brush guy, a sponge guy, a rag guy, uh, what, you know, old t-shirt guy? I don't know, whatever you're using <laughs> to physically clean the, the, the <laughs> items. I, I actually have multiple tools that I deploy strategically. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, I have, I've got a blue sponge. Right, I have the blue non-abrasive sponge. Big deal. I got 
the yellow and green sponge, which is the abrasive one, don't let it near your nonstick pans. But if you're like, you know, scrubbing down the stainless steel one, tears that stuff off. And then I have a brush that I use for like glasses that I can't get my hand into. Wow. Like water bottles. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I, think... I, have, I have all of those things. Um, I also have the Brillo pad for the really bad stuff. Um, and for the cast iron, I had the little plastic scrapey frame that you use to scrape the stuff off in a kind of a non-abrasive way. Oh, I don't know what that is. Check it out. It's a, a large, uh, plastic scrapey friend. I don't know what they call it. <laughs> of course, the plastic scrapey friend. Uh, I'm see. I give you guys credit. I'm lazy. I have a I have one of those blue sponges, and I just use it on everything because uh, I could not handle. But I know people who use like dish rags, and I feel like you don't get a consistent cleaning service. I hate them. I've never heard of someone using like, a dish rag, like a blue like they have blue disposable dish rags. If you've ever seen them, oh, we use yeah. those, but not for like the the cleaning part, but for the like time to get the the dirty liquids off of the thing. Yeah. No, I know people who like put dish soap on them and like use them to scrub their dishes, which makes no sense to me. Huh. Maybe that's how you're supposed to use them. I've been using them wrong the whole time. I mean, again, you don't really get a good, strong cleaning surface from it. But, uh, but I will say my, I don't know if you guys have any kitchen pet peeves. My biggest pet peeve is when someone takes the dishes sponge and starts wiping the countertops with it. The dish sponge, yeah. that's, that's a health safety nightmare. Should Your dish sponge should go nowhere near your countertops. But the problem is uh, it's impossible for anyone to know which one is which if they're not you. Well, I use, for my counters, I use spray and paper towels. I only have one sponge. There you go. So just don't touch. Don't touch. Dishes only. It can't leave the area of the sink. That makes sense. This is why I don't have any friends and I'm single. So, hmm. I mean, I, I do the same thing. The, I do occasionally I will like like when I get soapy water like out of the sink yeah. I will like wipe it back into the sink with the dish sponge but otherwise like I really don't like I really don't want my dish sponge that I wash like things that I eat off of to come in contact with like cleaning like cleaner or like raw like, food on the counter too it's like, oh yeah it's, yeah, yeah that too baffling. right weird I also don't like to leave my dish sponge in the sink. Oh, like if yeah, I, that's... If I had my way, and it never, ever touches the sink. Maybe that's what I... You know what? I think that's going to be my pick this week. I won't spoil it, but I have a... I love... Do you guys have any of the uh, the OXO um, soap pump and oh, yeah. removal holder? Ooh. No. I don't have that, but we have... Uh, we're an OXO family over here. Yeah. The, the, I'll, I'll talk about it later, but that that is a great... That was a great purchase. Now, Sean, I think you and I need to uh, put our, you know, smush our mind grapes together and and we need to invent something that is like, you know how like my sink is, it's like a newfangled sink. And so the, the, the shower head, if you will, this, this, the faucet yeah. part is like, it comes off and you can like spray it. Yeah. And then it like goes back, like it has like a spring. We need that for sponges. So like the sponge just can't uh, touch on a rip, the like on a rip cord. <laughs> yeah, like you pull it down from above, you scrub some stuff, and you let it go, and it shoots back up out of the sink, that's out, a, out away idea. from danger. That's yeah. like that's a Kickstarter idea right there. Where, but that, <laughs> and then there's also, but it's like a it's like a utility belt almost, and you put it on the wall. It's got like a brush on it and a sponge, and so you never lose them. This is amazing. I think that's pretty good. Don't they have those in like labs, like the the little tubes you pull down from the ceiling to like dispense different chemicals and stuff. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. Different like detergents and uh, and other. It things. sounds I like would, it I sounds like you want to you want to cook in a medical facility. I I know it's probably pretty clean. And that's true. That's true. Yeah, you could eat off of it. I think that's great. And I would love a, an air compressor that like blows and then you could just like blow the water off your dishes. I mean, I guess the water would go everywhere. Else, <laughs> but your dishes would be very dry or like a, like a vacuum, like a vet. You know, like I was at the dentist the other day and they have that thing where they put it in your mouth and it 
and it like sucks your spit oh out God. like that with like a big head and you could just put it over your dishes and it just sucks the water up that's a now, good idea but also we've almost invented a dishwasher at this point <laughs> so I, I feel like we're kind of defeating our own purpose where it's like what if there was a machine that just washed your dishes for you <laughs> I was gonna say, have we talked about my experience with commercial dishwashers? I don't recall. I don't think so. So I worked at a Boy Scout camp, and we we had a commercial kitchen with a commercial dishwasher, and this has made me realize how much residential dishwashers suck. So this was it was pretty big, but I think like you know American houses are huge. You could fit one of these, and I think it would be worth it. It's about like you know. Uh, you know those like <clears throat> half-sized crates that you put the dishes in if you go to like school or something, right? And you have to yeah. slot them in. They have these like big. Uh, they kind of look like a dishwasher rack, but they're very thick and plasticky, and they stack on top of each other. So what are the commercial dishwasher is is a, a tall-ish box, not too tall. It could fit on a regular counter. You could stack a couple of these things in there, and you slide it in. And then these gates closed, close down over it. And it stays there for 90 seconds. Um, and it makes a hell of a lot of noise. And whoosh, whoosh, that's flying everywhere. And then you lift it up and you slide it into the next one, which is a dryer. Chunk. Down it goes. Again, like 90 seconds, two minutes. Whoop, now they're dry and out they go. And it, it there won't be any anything like... Even stuff that's kind of caked on comes off and those are only like the worst stuff that you have to get in for yourself and it'll be completely dry at the end. All these new dishwashers, they it's never dry. I don't know if you two have had these experiences with your you two probably also have new dishwashers. In my experience, the older the dishwasher, the drier your dishes will be. I think that that's got to be an ener the the energy saver stuff they've put on appliances these days. Like, I guess I'm for it, but I agree with you, Dan. The problem I have with my dishwasher is it gets my dishes clean. It just takes like hours. It takes yeah. forever. It, it, it's so slow. Like, if you could just even if it were half as fast, I'd be like, wow, okay, that's pretty impressive. Huh. Yeah, when I get in like one of those honest to goodness American houses someday, maybe if I ever get an honest to goodness American house, I'm totally just gonna be like. Why don't, whatever water hookups you need, put them in. We'll just have a separate little room, like with the washer and dryer, squirreled away in some other room. doesn't matter because it's only going to take you 90 seconds to do it. And you get this little cart. Like I'm imagining, like, it doesn't even need to be in the kitchen. You you take those little plastic crates, you fill them up with your dishes, you put them on a little cart, you wheel it over to the laundry room. You don't even leave the room. Just sit there. It's only going to take five minutes, and then you're done. So you I, I don't know how much clothes. water that uses. Can you put your laundry in there too? That, see, I I don't know. Like I guess like apartment buildings and at school we had the the heavy duty washer dryers and they didn't seem that much better than a regular No, I think just the fabrics hold the water so aggressively that it wouldn't you have to take so much time uh Spin Although, cycle, take I think all the time about how did you ever notice this that if you if you stared into those dryers at Maris and you and you kind of looked and like let your eyes glaze over that there was just flames like actual propane powered flames around that drum and that was the heating element for the dryer. Yeah, that's how gas dryers work. They have an actual like <laughs> they burn the gas to produce heat. I'm I'm sorry. This is this is the dryers that they had at Marist were propane. I rem remember how um, I remember this so vividly that when I really saw it once, it was because in my memory, uh, you there was no interface for payment that you could use at the thing. It was all online, but you could see a little plastic thing where the interface would have been in some other installation, but it was covered over. And I found one where the plastic thing had fallen off. And you could just look in and see fire inside of the dryer, <laughs> straight through the thing. I was like, this, it seemed like a terrible idea because you're putting, I guess the clothes are typically wet, but eventually they get not wet. And there's a bunch of lint flying around and stuff. It didn't seem like a good idea. And I've looked, every apartment building I've stayed at, I, I've 
every time I put the clothes in, I'm like, is it fire back there? Now I'm always curious. They're, they're becoming less and less common, uh, gas dryers. Um, you, you don't see them yeah. as often these days. I'm going to triple check the like hookups to the dryers here. I really want to know. I don't think they, I, I can't imagine they are. They look a lot like regular dryers. They don't look like the dryers we had at Marist. Well, what's funny is, uh, believe it or not, they'll look identical from the front um, it, it, and the sides. Like if you put an electric and a gas model side by side, uh, they're identical except for the, the pipe. How do you know all that. this? Because I bought a washer and dryer a couple years ago, and my the first house I bought had a gas hookup for a dryer, no electric, and <laughs> I was so like, I'm not hooking up a gas dryer that I actually paid an electrician to put in a box so I could have an electric dryer, which was smart because most houses have that. Um, but it's it's a totally common thing. You can go buy a new one today; they still make it. It's cheaper to run because the gas is cheaper than the electricity, um, but there are also some. It's also a little more expensive than electric. Um, and when they break down, you're really fucked because it's not like an electric thing. They, a guy could just put a new, you know, uh, computer chip in you. It's really sort of a little more complex. Mm. Weird. Yeah. But you can't get a gas powered washer. You can only get an electric powered washer, which <laughs> makes sense, but it's also kind of silly. <laughs> Imagine a steampunk uh, dishwasher. Well, they got to heat the water somehow, right? Uh, yeah. I feel like there there should be some sort of setup. Well, I guess it goes in the wrong direction, but like you should be able to do both at the same time. Like the gas <laughs> dries the clothes and also like spins the washer or something. Like the steam from the clothes that you're drying spins spins the tumbler. Oh, uh, now here we go. Now that's well, a business that's idea. like a zero energy. Like the clothes power themselves. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Once, <laughs> once you start it going, it just goes forever. It's like a perpetual motion. <laughs> <laughs> but it only works on clothes. Right. You just have to keep like every day. You have to put your dirty clothes into it. You just put keep your clothes right in. You have to grab clothes. them out. Yeah. <laughs> we're just rocking good ideas tonight we yeah we are on a roll Damn. now here's the real question about dishwashing like what this has been my my sort of saga with the hand washing dishes like what dish soap do you use like what liquid dish soap or oh do you... i i got a hookup i got i got a hookup oh, i got okay. i gotta be with my lady mrs myers here i'm a, this is a mrs myers household Ooh, um and and, and uh, mrs myers dishwashing in the lemon scent is uh is my go-to does a great job that sounds nice so that's I a tried... liquid detergent it, it is a it is a liquid dish soap um it's a little thicker than like a dawn i find like a dawn or a, or a palm olive to be a little thin um it's a little jellier mm. so i think it sticks a little bit better um, and it smells great. That's interesting. See, I like prefer Dawn or Palm Olive, but I do m most of my grocery shopping at Whole Foods for like just geographical reasons. Um, and like they don't carry Dawn or Palm Olive. So I've tried all the brands that they have and they're horrible. <laughs> like, it's it looks like dish soap when you squeeze it out of the bottle, but that is where the resemblance ends. Like it does not create suds, it does not get grease off <laughs> things, and except in, in incredibly large quantities. Um, but maybe sometimes Whole Foods has Mrs. Meyer's stuff, so maybe I can try that. I've been I, I use the hand soap, the multi-purpose spray, the concentrated clean. I've used a lot of their stuff. Yeah. I've been very satisfied. I will say. The one I, I try and buy, like not necessarily like earth friendly stuff, but I try and buy like nicer, no preservative, no chemical stuff. But the one thing I will not buy in that version is dishwasher packets because they now have like earth friendly, like dishwasher cleaning that you put in the dishwasher and they scare the shit out of me because I feel like it's going to be the same as the detergent where it's like, oh, it's good for the earth because it doesn't clean your dishes at all. <laughs> so like that, I'm like, no, no, I want the brand name the put in every chemical cleaner i need clean dishes well the the other um i i i don't i don't think we've discussed this on the show but but possibly the thing that broke my dishwasher in the first place is that like like my dish soap i would purchase like dishwasher 
like pods from Whole Foods and like so you know it's one of the, it's like that seventh generation brand or whatever which yep. is it's just like it's a completely uncolored just little like gel pack of like white powder um and so i bought d- dish pods one day as i as i usually do it was like a seventh generation bag of d- 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 detergent pods and I put one in my dishwasher and, you know, what went, went about my business and like my dishwasher stopped working at some point eventually. And then I noticed one day that the bag of pods that was under the sink was actually laundry pods and not dishwasher <laughs> pods. It looked exactly the same. Like you had to read the fine print to discover that this was seventh generation laundry pods and not dishwasher pods. Ugh. Yeah, I use the the finish all in one dishwasher pods, but I've never gave it much thought. I'm pretty sure it was a wire cutter recommendation at one point, and I see that they tweeted about it, but now I see it longer a wire cutter recommendation. So, mm. I really like. We mentioned the the drying rinse aid, like oh, using sure. rinse aid you helps got the a lot. Jet dry or, or yeah. Yeah, I I did happen. get that, and it didn't seem to help in our case at all. I think our mm. dishwasher is too goddamn efficient. Well. <laughs> That's part of the issue, but there's a great, um, and I, wire cutter did a blog post about how to properly clean your dishwasher. Do you know, like every so often, especially if it's old, you're supposed to like completely take it apart. Cause food can rest like in places you don't see unless you take it apart. Like it's really gross. Yeah. As a person who recently took apart their dishwasher, <laughs> there's yeah. a lot of nooks and crannies in there. Like the, 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 it, so at least I don't know. I'm sure it's different for different dishwashers, but in my, I have a Bosch dishwasher and like, there is a whole, like this one big, like plastic piece that is like a maze inside. And that's where all the water comes in and out of the dishwasher. Mm. And like, it, there's all kinds of things going on. There's like water. It's, it's, it's like a Rube Goldberg machine, uh, like, like slash water park, like all kinds of things happen. Like food gets in there and can like, gum up the works it's super weird that's a good tagline for a dishwasher company it's like a water park for your dishes <laughs> it is they should <laughs> still make a clear dishwasher i like that oh yeah that that is a really good idea i saw i saw a video of that online uh maybe it wasn't clear but someone stuck a camera in the dishwasher so you could see how it works it's yeah, pretty well, cool there was one at CES a few years ago where it was like a, just like to show how the washing technology worked, but they essentially built a clear one and it was everything you dream about. Like it was, it was like so unbelievably cool. Uh, yeah. But then I also realized like most people it's under a countertop and like you wouldn't, even if the front were clear, you wouldn't even really get a good view anyway. Yeah. yeah. I have, so here are my fun dishwasher facts on this dishwasher episode of don't panic. Um, one the dishwasher was invented by a lady in the 1800s, I think. But if I remember correctly, classic, some guy like stole it from her. Um, and my other dishwasher fun fact is you're not supposed to clean your dishes too much before you put them in because the detergents are activated in part by oil. So if your dishes are too clean, then it actually won't do anything. Right. Right. The wire cutter dishwasher review is very informative on that topic. That's where I learned about this. I'm so guilty of the pre rinse. I hate I and it's the dumbest thing. I hate putting dirty dishes in my dishwasher. I really do. <laughs> there is stuff stuck to it. I'm like, no, I have to get it off. And I'm like, at that point, I should just wash it. I'm I'm very bad. That was the, they were saying, the like, the thing they get into in the article, it's like, it used to be, that, like, used to be the case. Like, that used to be the correct thing to do, because the, the detergents they were using did not really, like, they weren't great at getting food off. But, like, now the detergents are, like, enzymes, and they're, like, actually eating the food. So, like, you need to have food for them to eat, otherwise they don't do anything. Um, which is super weird. Um, but... I, I don't know. It works. It also makes me feel better about being lazy. 
Well, that's the other thing. I don't know. I know you guys don't watch a lot of television, but they've had some, one of the uh, detergent brands has had these commercials where they say, and I'm fudging the numbers a bit, but you get the idea where it's like, oh, uh, hand washing your dishes uses like a gallon of water a minute or some crazy amount. And running your dishwasher once uses one gallon for the whole cycle or something where it's a lot more water efficient. Their whole gimmick is like run a load every day in your dishwasher because it's more efficient than washing in between loads. And I'm like, mm, okay, I guess. I have a small dishwasher, so I have to run a load out. <laughs> well, I, I'm excited, Colby. You're going to have to give us a full rundown when your new dishwasher comes in. Yeah, did you get any like specific features? Did you shop around for the correct dishwasher? Um, I. So with the exception of it breaking down on me, I really liked the dishwasher that I had before. Like, It worked pretty well. It was super quiet. Mm-hmm. It was Bosch. And, like, those are the quiet ones, apparently. Um, So I got another one of those, but the, like, slightly nicer version of the one that I had. And it has, the thing I'm excited about is it has the third rack, like, the top utensil drawer. It's going to be dope. Now, is it Bluetooth? Is it uh, uh, HomeKit compatible? No, it's not. (laughs) It doesn't doesn't ping you when your dishes are done? I just no. imagine at some point in the future, Colby's like, I don't know what happened, guys, but every time someone rings my doorbell, my dishwasher starts. <laughs> the smartphone's out of control. So uh, uh, I have the, – the, the, that that sounds ridiculous, but I, I am currently having a, a like smart home-related problem where Uh-oh. like I have some – I have like – a home kit automation set up like to to for example turn off the lights when i leave um, but it's recently come to my attention that when that happens like when home kit thinks you leave and and tries to turn off the lights i'm i'm assuming that this is the problem but like something happens that stops my router like like my it stops my router dead like all internet traffic from my apartment ceases to work for like a minute and a half and then it will eventually you can like reconnect to the internet <laughs> it's very weird does it think your router's a light i don't know like i don't know if it's it my my theory is that there are too many devices on my router like my router's kind of old it was like from a different time <laughs> like 20 2014 right like or 2013 what is it, it was A-B-G? really nice g what it's it's the 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 not six but the one before mm. um but i so i think what happened what's happening is that like the siri ball or whatever tries to talk to all of the devices at the same time yeah. it just like freaks out for some reason but it's very weird I think that that makes a lot of sense. I had a, a my smart home destroyed my old router and I had to get a new one cuz I had like 40 devices running on it and it literally yeah. just said like I'm not doing it anymore. Uh um, right. and then a new one fixed all my problems. So it could be. But huh. Yeah. I should just get a new one. That's always the answer to all of life's problems. Just get a new one. Throw it away. That's that's right. You uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um <laughs> Well, I'm glad uh, we could get through all this dishwashing and dishwasher talk. What appliance should we talk through next week? You guys want to cover refrigerators or? I would love to talk about refrigerators. I have a lot to say about refrigerators, microwaves. Oh, yeah. Toaster ovens. Air fryers. You guys own an air fryer? No, I don't own an air fryer. And I don't know anyone who has one. It's interesting. Wire cutter says you shouldn't buy one. Yeah, I, I remember reading that. I still don't understand what it is. Like, what what would you use this instead of? Anything, or yeah. is it? That's a great tease for next week. Okay. Tune in to Don't Panic to find out what is an air fryer and why should you buy one or not. <laughs> How we really bring them in. They don't come for the tech news. They come for the appliance talk. Um, but we do have a few tech stories in the rundown this week. Um. Believe it or not, even though we just got through the holidays, our first show of the new year, which is very exciting. And episode 298, we're so close to 300. Uh, is there any story in here? We got a bunch of iPhone rumors. Uh, we've got some rest in pieces. We've got kind of an odd mix, no real sort of announcements, but just a, a loose group of content. If there's anything in here you guys want to 
start with in particular. Yeah, it is a weird, it's a weird group. Yeah, there really, I mean, there were a couple like massive stories that I just don't feel like breaking down, like the Russia hack of our government. Like being dead? Oh. Oh, no. Like actual important stuff. Um, there's that. And then what was the, there, what, there was another really huge story that lasted for a couple weeks where I'm like, I just cannot wrap my mind around it. So this is the fun, simple stuff. Uh, or we could just talk about air fryers. Whatever you guys want. Well, well, I'm. I think we talked about this last week, but I'm. I am waiting for air tags. Like, this has been my number one most anticipated Apple product. I think I would still be more excited about air tags than any like fancy new Apple Silicon Mac that Apple could announce next year. Well, then can I ask you a question, Dan? Yes. Given the choice, which would you rather have right now? Air tags or the 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 long lost air power mat and technology? Air tags. Okay. Yeah. And the I th- I don't even think I'm excited necessarily for the tags themselves, but and is one theory that the reason they haven't announced it yet is because they're still waiting for all the devices to have the U1 chip um, or more of them. But anyways, like when I can look for my AirPods with the AirTag technology and see them superimposed in AR in the couch, oh my God, it's like that's going to save back, you know, in the future when I have to leave the house again, uh, that's going to save hours of time every year. Of like ah shit like where did I put them this time they're not in the place they're supposed to be uh, are they in the jacket are they in my backpack are they on the table um, it's going to be amazing that's what I'm looking forward to I don't even want the air tags themselves I just want them for AirPods and I know that that, that won't happen immediately but I have to assume that once the air tags come out they'll come out with an AirPods case that supports it. You'll have to get another ear. <laughs> another my, my third AirPods case. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, now, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, I get excited about this, but only if the, you don't have to throw them away when the battery dies. Mm. Is that a convenience thing or a price point thing for you? Like why why throwing why would you away. not mind just throwing them away? Are you worried? What if about Apple? Just... What if Apple? Uh, what if it's part of the Apple and subscription? And you just get your new AirTags every year. Maybe that's okay. Or what if what if each tag is like, say, twenty bucks, but it lasts three years? Is that a fair? Like, what's the value? Or is it fifty bucks and it lasts for five years? Or is it like, what's the price to time? Where or is it environmental? Right. I bet at minimum, I bet they take uh, dead ones to recycle. I mean, that, that yeah. seems like a no brainer. That's, that's probably true. I think the, the, like I tried the tiles at, I think twice I've tried it. And I think of the, the eight tiles that I owned, like I needed to use one of them. I needed to use like two out of the eight before they died before the battery died so it was just it just didn't seem like a very solid i don't know like i i didn't get very much value out of it before i had i was asked to throw them away and like <laughs> get new ones yeah i mean yeah. i would i would think the because de- i mean there were rumors of these what two years ago we first yes. learned they were working on it's been forever it's got there's got to be some sort of wacky technology and maybe they're trying to put wireless charging in it though i don't know they could get it small enough to do that on um, the wireless charging tech um i i don't know there's got to be something about it that's it was the same with air power that's why i kept getting delayed it was technical issues um that's true so uh, but the reason we're talking about this is there was a big sort of uh what's coming in 2021 for apple rumor dump among them, as you mentioned, air tags again could finally be coming this year, uh, which would be great. They also mentioned um, we've talked before about augmented reality, whether it's a headset, glasses, both. Who knows? Some sort of product this year. Um, also planning to release new AirPods. That's not really surprising. More Apple Silicon Macs. Also not surprising. And the first devices with mini LED displays 
um, including on a new iPad Pro and various MacBook models. I just want air, air, air tags. That's it. <laughs> well, you know, it's so funny because I, I think for a while, Dan, you were excited about the headphones too, and then you got the headphones. And then, I'm, yeah, that, I'm half happy. I do. I love the headphones. This is everything. Everything I wanted out of the headphones, except they were too expensive. Um, <laughs> but otherwise, <laughs> otherwise they're great. I'll give credit. They're better looking than I thought they would be. Oh, when someone's wearing yeah. them, they look very nice. Something else I was just realizing is um, the the uh, ear pads are like fabric, which some people didn't like. I, I don't really like. I can't really tell. Um, I think one thing that's nice about it is it's less. It doesn't stick to you as as much. Um, but the other thing is like the the leather headphone ear ear. What what do you call them? Ear pockets. Ear ear puff. Ear puffs. Uh, have always been the first thing to go on any of my fancy headphones. So I'm curious, except for this this other pair of headphones that maybe I'll, I'll pick next week. Um, the, but they're not noise canceling. But all the Bose headphones and, and like stuff like that I've gotten, the, the little foam, the leather or pleather ear, ear pieces, like instantly. Not instantly, but like, Within five years, it's going to happen. So I'm curious if these will hold up better because I haven't seen a headphone that has this kind of ear ear cup design. Do you sweat in ears? Do your ears sweat? I'm because I have that that pleather vinyl, whatever you call it, um, and it makes my my ears sweat. Uh, I you know what? Now that you mention that, that has happened to me. It hasn't happened to me with these, but that could be because I'm in a very dry. Sure. <laughs> heated uh house in vermont and it's the the summertime uh but it hasn't happened to me so far all right i was just wondering if the fabric had any uh impact because that 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 vinyl whatever that pleather is it, it's so slick the second you get any liquid on it it's like you know it just sticks to your head so yeah and have you ever had these problems with those things where they get like some weird residue on them they kind of seem to like decompose yeah that's what that's what happens with these the ones for these headphones like they they at some point they start to like flake and I'll take them off and I have like like black speckles all over my face yeah um but these these I've replaced the pads on these like four times since I bought them in again in 2014 or something. <laughs> um yeah, and that's pretty much it for, for Apple rumors. There's one other note in here about supposed foldable iPhone prototypes uh, uh, that may be in development. Um, supposedly, uh, Apple commissioned two prototype shells with displays from supplier Foxconn. One would be like the Galaxy Z Flip or Motorola Razor, uh, your traditional sort of vertical iPhone that folds in half. Um, as well as uh, something closer to like the Microsoft Surface Duo, where two screens are held together by a hinge, closing it like a book. Uh, have have any of you, either of you, used one of these foldable things? No, no, me either. Okay, I, I don't. Yeah, I'm curious how it is. I can't imagine myself using it, but like. Hypothetically, if you could have a no compromises device that is as compact as a phone, but can be as expansive as like an iPad mini. Yes. Sounds yes. nice. Yes. Like yeah. if, if you could do that, <laughs> yeah. I just don't know if you can. But that's what excites me about Apple. I mean, they've got more engineers and smart people and money to figure out that problem than just about anyone else. So if they're working on it, I feel good about it. I mean, uh, I I stand by. I like the idea of the foldable phone at the start, uh, and I still like it. And I would be the first in line to get a foldable uh, iPhone. Uh, it's just a matter of you're right. Can they get it slim and portable and good battery life, and the screen doesn't crack in half when you fold it? Um, I don't know, but yeah, that's gonna be hard. <laughs> it's exciting, but if anyone can do it, I'm gonna I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt. But I think it'll be a while. I don't think we'll see that yeah. for quite a while. So frankly, of the Apple, I'm most excited about the AR stuff. Because again, yeah. I think Apple's laid such a good foundation with the technology and the phones and developers and all of that. Um, and 
nobody's really, I mean, you could argue Oculus is doing VR really well and a few other companies, but nobody's really done AR to the consumer. I mean, there's HoloLens, but nobody has one. So um, if Apple can bring AR to the masses, that's pretty exciting. Um, but it does seem cool. I don't know if AR would my, make my life better or worse. <laughs> I mean, again, yeah, what you, it's a, kind of like the foldable phones, right? It's like, what's the selling point? Like, what's the advantage? What are, what are you getting out of it other than it's Apple and it's cool? Like, is it just like emails popping up in my field of vision? Like, that kind of sucks. <laughs> but I think, you know, it's sort of like I read all these. I don't know if you guys have seen these stories about Google Glass, which is still around. And actually, they sell a lot of them, they, but they sell them to industrial companies. And people wear them while, while they're assembling car parts and stuff. And it has information on it about what they're doing and if, if there are issues and things like that. It makes a lot of sense. I'm just trying to think yeah. of what your like average Joe application is for AR glasses in your daily life. Yeah. I think it depends if they're like low key or not. Well, like I feel like the, the part of the problem with Google Glass is like you look like a dingus. Wow, well, like, sure. It wasn't subtle, right? But I th I think the other part is the App Store. Like, that's the difference. Like, hmm. they've already set up an AR infrastructure for developers to build on. So even if Apple doesn't know how people are going to use them, they've got a zillion developers out there who's going to throw everything at the wall and find the few applications that work really well. That's, that's something true. Google never had. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. So. That's thinking. <laughs> that'll, be, that'll be fun Maybe. did we talk about the car and speaking of apple did we talk about the car last week and speaking of ar uh the the wait can you be more specific the apple the apple is like some big publication was like apple is going to release a car in 2024 yes i uh no we didn't talk about it on the show that was the third rumor that i didn't put into the rundown because <laughs> it was like this is so far out that uh, but I think that's totally fair. Uh, suppose, you're right, 2024 to produce a passenger vehicle that would include its own breakthrough battery technology. Um, the idea is that they're probably not going to build it themselves. They'll partner with somebody else, but it's going to be their tech in it, starting with a new battery design um, that could, quote, radically reduce the cost of batteries and increase the range. Um, it also talks about um, them powering the software of the vehicle as well. Um, using their own custom LiDAR sensors um, among uh, among other technologies that they, they have in there. It says here, a plants use a unique monocell battery design that bulks up the individual cells of the battery and frees up space inside the battery pack by eliminating pouches and modules that hold the battery materials. Hmm. That's weird. Some, uh, a anonymous person who... Uh, saw Apple's battery technology at some point said it's next level like the first time you saw the iPhone. Hmm. It's a big promise. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I, I would love to learn more about batteries because like it seems like that's a lot of what's interesting about what Tesla does and it's the big limiting factor in almost everything. Like you, you see how much more useful laptops got with the M1 in part because the battery life got so much better. Uh, like it seems like with all these people working on battery technology that it would make like, why wouldn't you start instead of starting with a car? Like, oh, we have this great tech battery technology. Let's make a car. I would have thought like, well, could you make an iPhone that lasts for three days? Um, like like the old flip phones used to, but maybe there's something about this battery technology that only is useful for big batteries. I don't know enough to say. Yeah, I, I don't, if it's a form factor issue and they just want such slim iPhones, there are limits to what they can do. I mean, to be fair, they've spent the last ten years building their own batteries. You know, they obviously have a lot of expertise um, mm. in that area. Yeah, I mean, as we move to an all theoretically an all electric future, right? I mean, that's what we're whether it's solar or wind. Or, or geothermal or any of these sort of sustainable uh, energies that create electricity and then moving to an electric grid with our homes and our cars and everything else powered off electricity, batteries are the absolute foundation of that. None of it works without batteries because uh, you got to put that power somewhere. So there's a reason why people are investing in it. 
um, if we really are heading, you know, people for years were like, maybe hydrogen will power the future, you know, hydrogen cell cars and stuff. It looks like we're going electric and um, Apple would be smart to, you know, why not use cars to test out large cell batteries and then do what Tesla did, where they took their batteries and now people can buy them to put them on their homes and collect power from their solar panels made by Tesla's uh, partner company, parent company, sister company. Right. Um, could be the future for them. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Um, any other uh, any other stories here in the rundown, um, or should we move on to picks? Although it looks like they're the spreadsheet's pretty sparse. Oh, sorry. I, I have a pick. I just have to put it in. Oh, okay. I have one too. Uh, while you guys are putting those in, I do just want to do a quick rest in peace to Adobe Flash, officially retired uh, as 2021 ends. Um, it is over. Um, technically, they're not going to start blocking Flash content until January 12th. Major browsers all shut it down, um, and Microsoft will block it in most versions of Windows once you update. Um, it's over. Uh, they started uh, in 2015. Adobe asked developers to move on. Things became official in 2017 when they announced, announced this being shut down. Of course, many remember Flash as being the underpinning for a whole generation of web technologies. Uh, guys, any any great memories of Flash you want to share? Oh, tons. Uh, Newgrounds, homestarrunner.com. Like, yeah, all of, all of my early formative... Uh, internet experiences happen via flash pretty much yeah i mean i just i just remember when the first iphone came out and they're like oh you can't use flash on it and no one's like so you can't go to any website like that's how pervasive flash was yeah they're like yep. nothing works on the iphone and apple was like youtube videos were all in flash and all this stuff where um apple had to like and credit them they won sort of um where everyone moved off of flash eventually Did you go to New? Uh, no, I was I was a good boy. <laughs> I didn't I didn't go to a. No, I I did play a lot of like uh, Flash games. Uh, I don't know, a Pop Cap with like the the original Bejeweled and some of those games you could play in the browser with Flash and stuff. I was a big uh, a big fan of those for sure. Oh yeah. And we'll you guys will be happy to know that. Um, Archive .org, or the Internet Archive is preserving Flash games and animations. Um, I don't know. Are they compiling them to JavaScript? Uh, that's a really great question. Uh, <laughs> How will anyone play them? They will emulate the content. Huh. Sounds JavaScript? like compiling it to JavaScript to me. Oh, it's made oh, possible yeah. by a Flash emulator called Ruffle. Ruffle. Yep. R U F F L E. Yeah, Flash Player written in Rust, compiled to WebAssembly. So, nah, kind of not JavaScript. There you go. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, it's important history of the uh, of the internet there. Yeah. So if I go to homestarrunner.com right now, it won't work? I didn't know that still existed. Oh, it's still there. Oh, okay. Woo. Oh, it's very different now. Wait, they HTML-ified it? <sighs> wow, look at that. It's HTML now. Well, that's I, I got the pop-up on my computer in December where it's like, just letting you know, we're going to uninstall Flash on January 1. And I'm like, I didn't know I still had it installed. <laughs> oh, they're using Ruffle, too. Oh. Wowie. We hope to dig in and let us know how that bad boy works. It worked great. I just started a strong bad email. It seemed to work. Uh, guys, why don't we hustle on over to picks here um, as the spreadsheet fills up? I'm going to go first only because I already mentioned mine. Um, and that is actually, it's two picks. It's a set. Uh, the OXO um, Good Grips Stainless Steel Sink Organizer. Um, and to partner with it, the Good Grips Stainless Steel Soap Dispenser. Um, the uh, organizer has spot for, you know, sponges and other materials, and then a nice little sort of circle tray to put your soap dispenser on. Um, it's got a little drain pan underneath. 
uh, that'll hold any dripping water. And the pump soap dispenser is so much better than squeezing the bottle. Um, I cannot stress how great it is. So, uh, and believe it or not, I've gotten both of these as gifts for people. That's how much I love them and other people really liked them. So um, I, I will strongly recommend these two as an addition to any uh, kitchen. You can't go wrong. Nice. Um, speaking of kitchen, Colby, what are you cooking up? Yeah, so I'm pretty sure I picked my old sous vide thing on the show like ages ago, but my old sous vide thing broke and it was out of warranty. So um, I got a new sous vide thing for Christmas, but I got a jewel for Christmas. I received the jewel one instead of the Innova one. And holy moly, it's so much better. Like it's more expensive and it. It is so worth it. Like it heats up in like two minutes, which with the, in, in, in like it used to take the, the other one, like 25 or 30 minutes to like heat to, you know, 130 degrees or something. It was, it's crazy fast. Um, and it, I don't know, it, it, it seems like it's a, it's a lot smaller, which is just convenient, I guess, but it seems really nice. So if that's the thing you're into, I just get the jewel one. Don't get the Innova. It's, it's not worth it. This, this is like, without a doubt, the sexiest looking sous vide machine I've ever seen. <laughs> this is like a good looking device. Yeah, it's pretty good. It now, seems good. Can I ask, and again, we're getting off on, a, on an appliance tangent here. Uh, I'm not a sous vide expert. What do you, like, what do you specifically cook with your sous vide machine? Um, I mean, you can do, like, like, like meat, mostly. Like, meat. So, like, steaks. I do steak a lot. Um, and then, like, you just have, I, like, the weird thing about sous vide is, like, anything you cook in it, you have to, like, brown it after, otherwise it's gross. Like, when it, when you, if you make a steak, it comes out and it's just kind of gray and watery. So then you, like, cook it really fast on a pan after. Um, but I've done, like, steak, like, anything you would do in, like, a slow cooker you can do in the sous vide. Um, like, I've done, like, pork shoulder. That came out really good. And, like, you just, leave, like, you leave it in there for two days, you know, like, or overnight, and it just, like, you know, slowly gets hot in water. That's wild. Um, I just did, so the other day I did some bacon. Mm. And so that's the same. You just take a pack of bacon out of your fridge. You throw it in the in the water bath, cook it up overnight. And then in the morning, you unwrap it and, like, throw your bacon in the skittle in the skillet for, like, the, the two minutes a piece. And it's, it's, like, perfect. So well cooked. Yeah. It's a little unnecessary, oh. but it's kind of fun. I think it's great. I want to come over to Chef Colby's house. This sounds nice. Someday, Sean. The steakhouse. Colby's Steakhouse. <laughs> um, excellent. All right. Yeah. The, uh, the, as Colby says, the. You can also, you can also cook eggs. Like, uh, just put the whole egg in there. Yep. I did eggs for the first time recently. It's pretty good. Oh, pretty good. All right. Well, let's stay on our uh, on our kitchen theme. Dan, what are you picking? Uh, <laughs> this is I was I was surprised for a second. No, this is <clears throat> this is not a kitchen theme thing. I was waiting around waiting for a COVID test and I wanted a game, an iOS game that I would pay for that would be fun. And I was specifically had a hankering for a tower defense game. So I like Google, what's the best tower defense game? And I found this kingdom rush vengeance thing, which sounded like it wouldn't be good. It sounded like it would have lots of like micro transactions and stuff like that. Um, but if it's perfectly good, it, you don't have to, there are micro transactions inside, but you don't have to buy them and you just put your little towers out and watch, watch the arrow shoot and, and have fun. Um, I think it's also on Android. Uh, yeah, so that's my recommendation. Yes, it is also on Android. Five bucks, I think it's $5. $2.99. Oh, interesting, it's more expensive on the Play Store. Hmm. 
<laughs> That's weird. I wonder why that is. I wonder, this is the wildest of speculation, but I wonder if it's harder to get Google Play customers to do in-app purchases, so they have to charge more up front to make the mm. same amount of money, versus iOS, where it's so easy to do in-app, they actually make more with a lower opening price point. Huh. Wild speculation. That, that's a good idea. I like that speculation. Mm. But Kingdom Rush Vengeance. <coughs> Uh, two ninety nine on the iOS store and more expensive on the Play Store. Excellent, Dan. We'll have links to that and all the picks over on our uh, website, so you're gonna want to check it out. Don'tpanic.io. Uh, it now knows there can be fifty three weeks in a year, so it will work, <laughs> uh, which is good. Right. That's, I, you know, that's the thing. I don't understand how websites work, and I never will. But I just love the fact that, like. Oh, the website's not working. Oh, it's because it doesn't know it's a leap year. Like that's just could just take down a whole site. That's awesome. I love that. Oh, it's yep. taken down many sites. I, it's I, just, but just like that little thing. I think you would think like, oh, it would just like skip that and just like be like, it, just ignore that and keep working. Like, no, it's it's awesome. Are you familiar <laughs> with Leap Second, Sean? I've heard of it. Uh, can that also <laughs> take down a website? Yes. That's wild. That's great. I, again, go, just goes back to, I have no idea how any of this stuff even like, how any of it e is even possible. Right. Well, that's the, the answer to that question is barely. It's, it's, it's barely <laughs> possible. Oh, gosh. That's why we love technology. It's incredible. Um, but please do go check out our website. It does work. Don'tpanic.io. All the episodes, the pics, all the video, they're all there. Of course, you can subscribe wherever you get podcasts. Don'tpanic.io. Uh, no, uh, don't panic. Look for it on your favorite podcast app. We're on all of them, including Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Of course, a video version on YouTube as well. And of course, you can follow us uh, at Don't Panic Show on Twitter. Email us Don't Panic Show at gmail.com. Guys, anything else you would like to say? Happy New Year. Happy Elf. That's a good point. Happy New Year. Hell yeah. Make sure you check out the next episode of, uh, of Up for Debate because Matt and I are talking New Year's, um, which is very exciting. So you're going to want to get that over on the Up for Debate feed. Uh, we, we talk about some of the wild uh, traditions from around the world of what people do for New Year's for like good luck and stuff, which are just fantastically stupid. Um, um, uh, we talk about famous things that drop on midnight across the country. Uh, it's a really fun episode. So you're going to want you'll, you'll definitely learn a few things if you check that out. Um, and you'll hear my and Matt's New Year's resolutions. So check that out over mm. at UpForDebate.tv. But that's going to do it for us here. We will be back next week with, I'm sure, all sorts of Everyone's back from vacation. They're back from the holidays. They're gonna. All the tech companies are gonna start doing their big whoop de doos, uh, and so you're gonna want to join us next time. On behalf of Colby and Dan, I'm Sean. Thanks for being here. We'll see you next time for another thrilling edition of Don't Panic. <laughs>